Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Sweet Bath, and I'm super excited about this project. I'm using the Draculaura body and heavily loved Frankie head that were left over from my last project making rosemary, so let's get started on prepping those. I met a small business owner last year, and when I mentioned my repainting hobby, she said it was something she was interested in and watched repaint videos from time to time. The more we talked over the months, the more I got inspired to make her a doll of her business mascot, Naked Cowgirl. I did originally plan on making her an actual naked cowgirl, especially given that I struggle with sewing, so I sanded down the panty area and seam lines on the legs, unnecessarily as I did end up making clothes for her later. I airbrushed the head and body with Vallejo's flesh tone, sealing both with MSC, but using the gloss version on the body. In an attempt to replicate the hair on the reference image, I gave her a side part and bangs that I will later curl under, so I mark these important lines on the wig cap so I know where to add wefts. This part of the process should be pretty familiar. Use acrylic yarn, brush and straighten it, glue it to a wig cap, and trim. Most of this I did off camera since it's about the same in every video. When I style it, I use heated up tools and set it with a bit of hairspray. I don't have any footage of this part since, as you can see, I can't effectively style the hair with my current setup. I reattach the head to the body and start on the face after priming with a few layers of MSC. The pastel blush started off way brighter than I planned, but it toned down as the face up progressed. I always love how nice the shimmer looks on dolls, so I'll be adding Pearl X Micro Pearl all over throughout the face up. I can never see it well on the footage, but it looks so stunning in person. It's also best to go a bit heavy-handed with it, since it seems like a lot disappears between layers. I wanted the eyes to be looking slightly to the side, but when I added the pupils, she ended up looking a little wall-eyed, so I had to correct that later. I didn't really notice until after the layer was sealed in, so another reminder to always make sure you're happy with your progress before making it permanent. Since one of the recipient's specialties is eyebrow waxing, I tried to make these some of the nicest and most symmetrical brows I've ever done. I'm not sure if I succeeded, but I definitely took longer on these than I have for any other face up. I technically had free reign on the eye color since the reference image has no defined iris, so I ended up going with blue. I've always loved how striking light eyes look with dark hair. I wanted to modify the lips slightly, but I'm a bit too scared to cut and sculpt, and not confident in my abilities at this point, so I just stick to overlining the lips with pencil and extending the corners a bit.
I used gouache paint to add catch lights to the eyes. Then after sealing, I add a few layers of gloss to finish it off. I often use black paint to go over the eyelashes, but I don't have the steadiest hand and make them way thicker as a result. So I opted out this time, since I was really happy with these lashes. I also chose not to gloss the lips, since I wanted to go for a somewhat natural look. Besides, can you imagine how much junk would stick to a cowgirl's lip gloss? As I mentioned earlier, she's not going to be a truly naked cowgirl, as I originally assumed, so onto the clothing. For the pants, thankfully the only sewing I had to do, I used a pattern by Pulp NCL on this thin denim I picked up a while ago. After cutting the pattern pieces out and free checking them, I sew everything with my machine off camera. The pattern worked well, but I wish I could find thin stretchy fabric that looked like denim so I could make skinny jeans that tightly fit the doll. At this point, I tried them on the doll to make sure they fit right before I attached the closure, but decided they were too high-waisted for my liking. It was difficult to machine sew the waist after it was all assembled, so it doesn't look as nice as a result, so be sure to check the fit periodically. I tried making her pasties with oven-baked clay, but it was really sticky to work with, and I couldn't get it to lay properly, much less pull it off of the mannequin while keeping the shape intact in order to bake it, so I went for the trusty epoxy sculpt. I forgot that a change in materials required a change in the process, and didn't wrap the mannequin in plastic wrap or anything to protect it, so the epoxy cured to the mannequin, and I ended up having to basically chisel it off. While this cures, I work on the accessories. I make some gloves using the same process as I did for Dr. Girlfriend's video, and airbrush this fabric in the doll's hands with a mix of Vallejo's red terracotta and Beastie Brown airbrush paints. The other accessories are made using Monstrous Rivals Monica Decay's belt and Dead Tired Abby Bominable's shoes. After cutting and sanding down most of the details on the boots, I airbrushed both with the same airbrush paints. The details on the shoes are painted on with this iridescent gold deep acrylic paint from Golden Fluid Acrylics. She sounds like I'm trying to meet a word requirement on Nessay. Once I'm happy with this, the accessories are sealed in. To make her belt buckle, I measured and traced a small circle, drew the star, painted over it with a thin layer of gouache, then added a UV nail polish top coat and cured it with a black light. The epoxy is cured and I can finish off the pasties. Using golden fluid acrylics in silver this time, I paint in the star shapes I drew on, then carefully fill in the rest with a bright red gouache and seal. Once dry, I glue these to the body. The last accessory is the hat, which ended up being my biggest struggle. The stores near me stopped carrying Warbla, and I didn't want to wait for shipping, so I used a lightweight oven-baked clay and made a pattern for the brim after measuring the head circumference. I then made a basic cap shape to build the rest of the crown onto, hoping to affix it to the brim after painting, but the pieces didn't fit together the way I expected. I figured the gold ribbon used as the hat band would cover this, however it didn't lay where I needed it to. After all this, the hat didn't actually fit, so I ended up having to remake the whole thing in a larger size, this time with all my new knowledge of what not to do. I ended up getting Nightmare as part of a doll lot years ago, and was never able to sell it and kept forgetting to put it in the donation bin, but now I'm so glad I still have her. After all, what would a cowgirl be without her trusty steed? However, the fantasy colors aren't going to work for this project, so I use Ritz Synthetic Dye to change the mane and tail from purple to black. I'm not sure if the synthetic dye is best for doll heads, since it might stain the vinyl of the head, but it was no issue on the hard plastic horse body, and luckily the hair did not get damaged in the hot water. Once that's dyed and dried, I wrap the hair up as best I can and airbrush the body brown with Citadel's Mornfang Brown Paint. I can add additional details to wrap up the horse. I paint the hooves with black acrylic paint and let this dry. Pastels are used for the ears and muzzle. 
I considered adding additional markings, but ultimately decided to keep it simple. Paint is also used for the eyes, and once everything is locked in with MSC, I gloss the eyes and go over the hooves with a satin varnish. I completely forgot the doll's neckerchief, so off screen I cut a scrap of red fabric for this and with that she's all done. Time to pack her up to send her to her new home. So, here she is, the not-so-naked cowgirl. I had a lot of fun making her, and it was really nice to have time to focus on hobbies that make me happy. This may not be impressive to other customizers out there, but I was working on two other dolls alongside this one, and managed to get all their face-ups done in one day after taking a few days off work. It's incredible what we can accomplish with some free time that doesn't have to go toward responsibilities. Needless to say, I won't have a winter or holiday themed doll this year, but I can give a slight teaser about what's on the horizon for the first quarter of next year. I have four dolls currently in progress, several of which have planned release dates beginning in February, and hope to have all of them up by the end of March for you to enjoy. I've joined in the Angels and Demons doll collab hosted by Splendid Miscellany, so be on the lookout for a bunch of new dolls in March. I'm sure you're used to long pauses and uploads from my channel, but the quick back-to-back -back uploads is certainly going to be something new for me. Thank you for watching and continuing to support me, and a big thank you to my patrons, Bear and Han. I hope all of you have a safe and happy holiday season, and a wonderful start to 2024. It's been a crazy few years, but I'm so happy you're all still here and pushing through. I hope you stick around to see what's in store next, and as always, take care.